So in this video, we're going to go over some Gridfinity. Some of you may recognize this guy as being a Gridfinity grid. Now I'm not going to go through all of the details on making the Gridfinity grid. <coughs> because you can find all the specifications here for Gridfinity. And I'll include this link. Um, so Grizzy17 put these specifications together. For Gridfinity, if you haven't heard of Gridfinity, it's basically a way to organize um, small bins, typically inside of a drawer, but doesn't have to be inside a drawer. And this shape here helps them to, to stay in place. And then in addition to that, we have these little holes here where you can put a magnet. And I'll show you some that I've done that have a magnet in them. Now, one thing I did is I made uh, a parametric file so that I can make these squares any size that I want. And I can do that by using this spreadsheet. So if I tell it that I want only to do a one by two, for instance, if I do that, and then I look at my parametric, now I have a one by two grid. Now I'm gonna just go through how I made that and how I got that to work that way. Uh, but what it does is it basically allows me to make a grid of any size. What I found is making a two by two grid and then attaching them all together is actually the easiest way for me um, using a printer, a 3D printer, that I was asked to take a look at. So I'm going to show you that 3D printer here in a moment. So as far as putting this model together, uh, I am using the latest development version. Um, it may not be the very latest build, but it's 0.22 dev, and my build is 38419. I haven't looked at it this week to update it, but um, this one is working quite well for me. Now what I did for the base is I started out with an additive pipe. So I took this shape from here and created that shape and ran it around an additive pipe so that I could get a square. And then I added the pieces that were um, these pads and then the pockets all added separately. And I did that so that I could make sure that I could, I could keep the thing simple and make the shape that I wanted it to be. Finally, the way I've made it parametric so that I can dial up how many I want is to use a multi-transform. It's two linear arrays. So in my spreadsheet, and I'm just gonna halve that, I'm gonna tile that so you can see the spreadsheet alongside here. So in my spreadsheet, I can dial up the number of grids in the X direction and the number of grids in the Y direction. So if I said that was gonna be three in the Y direction, and then I say three in the X direction, you can see it just is a linear array that's spaced the distance of these um, grids. So they're like 42 millimeters, if I remember rightly. So you basically just a linear array on that. So I'm gonna show you um, I'll take it down to a one by one. And there's just a single square. So if I, if I make just a single square of it, we can, we can see that that's just one. Now these holes on the side, this is how I'm attaching them together because the four, the, the four way grid or the two by two, um, you may want to extend it. So what I did is I developed a little clip that I can clip them together with. So I'm going to show you that next. And to do that, I'm just going to go again back to a two by two. And I'm just going to show you the little clip in place. So if we scroll down here, the clip is here. I'm going to turn that on. We'll zoom in here. Let's just maximize this for a second. And you can see the clip just drops in there. 
it's a little bit lower than that surface so it's not going to interfere and it's just it has a pip inside the clip and I'm going to show you that by we'll get rid of our base you see that little pip here and this arch that allows it to clip in and hold the grids together so every time I create the grid it has those holes in it and then I can use the clip if you if you saw this one it's actually clipping across where you wouldn't need a clip because that's already together but if imagine that this was two separate grids that's how it would be holding it together right there so we would basically be able to see that it's holding that together and then you can put one here one here one here one here you can you can do as many as you need um, to hold it together so then of course we want to make a bin that fits in there so what did we do we created a bin that is also let me turn that clip off a bin that's also parametric so i'm going to show you that my bin is here right now the bin is a one by oh no i'm sorry it's a two by two bin so this is the larger bin and if we once again if i tile my views you can see the bin squares so i have two by two bin i could do a one by two bin for instance and i also have the height is parametric so i can choose what size i want the height of the bin to be so if i want the bin only to be 50 i can change that and my bin will actually change to the size that i want it to be so what that allows me to do is i can make a bin if i do a one by one bin just the smallest bin you can do i don't want it to be too tall or i won't be able to get my fingers in there because my fingers are a little bit chubby so I want to make sure that I can get to the bin. So 25 is probably not a bad height for a one, um, one square bin. But if I wanted to have a four square bin, that's when I might want to go, I'll just show you that four by one. There's a four by one if you're putting pencils in there or something. Um, and then a four by four bin this is the largest bin I've printed, um, and I made that one 75 millimeters. And these calculated dimensions are being used in the parametric file, but they're not something you have to change yourself. So yeah, then a, a four by four bin. So a four by four bin that's 75 um, millimeters deep. Um, that would be a big bin. That's, that's way bigger than I need it to be. So um, a two by two is plenty. And again, totally flexible. You can make the bins however big you want them. In fact, with that base, you can make any shape on top of the base. So, you know, when you're doing a gridfinity um, bin, you can make the top part of the bin any shape you want. So if you had something specific that you want to put in there, you can do that too. So this is a, you know, the way to do it in FreeCAD where you've got everything is parametric, very easy to do, very easy to make. So I'm just going to show you how I um, made a couple of those um, with the Antina Tina 2 Plus 3D printer. Um, that's a printer that was sent to me to evaluate, and I must say I'm enjoying using it. It's small, lightweight, fits on the, um, you know, conveniently on the side here, and I can use it just to, to run quick prints. I'm going to show you the software that goes with it first, and we'll upload a print, and then I'll show you how it works. So this software is from WeFun. It's the We Builder 2.5.0.2. And the way that it works essentially is you open up a file. It's a slicer, so I'm just going to open up the file. Um, I'm going to go into my Gridfinity area, and here is a two by 
two. So I'm going to open that. That's the bed. And you can see that two by two is basically as big as you can fit on this slicer or on this uh, printer. So I'm going to hit slice and it's going to slice this model. And you can use a Cura slicer as well, but this slicer is actually works quite well because it has all the features on it specifically for this printer. So once you've done that, you just basically connect to the printer here and then upload um, from there. So we're going to do that now. So what we do is we connect. And then once we're connected, we can simply upload it and it will print. So I printed lots of different pieces, um, some small bins, some large bins, and some grids. And as you can see, I got the magnets on the bottom, and you can just move them around to wherever you want them. I only put one magnet in one corner. You can put, obviously, four magnets in, but I think that's overkill for these small bins. The big one, I didn't use any magnets because if you watch when I press it down, it's, it's tight in there, so I don't need to do anything else with that. Um, the, the one by two bin, I did put one magnet in that guy, so they all work quite well. And here you can see I just um, finished them off, did another larger bin. Um, they're all clipped together, so they're all holding together. Glued all the magnets in, everything's all squared away there. Put a few pieces in so you can see what it looks like. So in here is just a close-up of the clips so you can see what they look like. They're very easy to print. They print uh, very quickly. I started out with little bow ties. They didn't work very well and I had to glue them in and it was a pain in the butt. So I switched over to these little clips I designed. They work much better. They're very easy to put on. There's no messing around. They're not fiddly at all. And you can get them on there and you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to glue them. You could glue them if you wanted to, I guess. Now for the Antina Tina 2 Plus, you can see the size of the bed is roughly four squares of the Gridfinity. Um, you can see that it has its um, PLA on the side of it, so it has its own holder there, carrier. Uh, it has its own bed leveling built in, and the bed is heated, and the thing moves very, very quickly, so the, the prints are actually quite fast out of it. A very easy to move around all uh, enclosed in one piece um, I set it up when I got it I just literally opened it plugged it all in put some PLA on it and it was printing right out of the gate so uh, very easy very simple if you're interested in that I'll leave a link below so that you can go to that and also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this um, Gridfinity free CAD file available on my Patreon and I'm going to make it free to everybody. So you'll be able to go and get it if you're interested in creating some Gridfinity bins and some Gridfinity grids, the base, or if you just want to take a look and see how I did it, you can absolutely take the file and take a look at that and get into the details of how I did it. Um, you can also print my clip from there. Uh, that's in that file, so I'm going to leave that there too, so you can you can print the bin, the clip, and the grid, and have fun with that. You can create uh, bins any size you like. I would appreciate it if you create some Gridfinity bins and grids. If you take some pictures and link them so that I can see them, let me know in the comments below so I can take a look. I'd love to see what you guys come up with because I know you, there's a lot of creativity out there. So I want to do that and make it available to everybody for free because 
uh, Gridfinity is a fantastic invention. It's not my invention. I just use that specification to, to uh, create these. The only thing that I changed was the way that they clip together. Uh, and again, you're, it's, you're free to use that any way you like. So uh, have fun with it. Let me know how you get on. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the channel, give this a thumbs up and subscribe. It's free. And I will see you in the next video.